Hello everyone and welcome back to Art Historian. Today we are going to be talking about our last Renaissance artist, not just our Renaissance master, but he's the last person we're going to look at for now in the Renaissance period of art history. And that is Sandro Botticelli. We'll be talking mostly about his painting, The Birth of Venus, but we are also going to talk a little bit about the artist himself. It's safe to divide this artist's career into three different stages, and that is a religious stage where a lot of his works were your classic Renaissance religious content, a mythology stage where he was a lot more influenced by Greek and Roman mythology, and an expressive stage at the end of his career. And we are going to skip over the religious section of his works because we've already looked at a lot of religious paintings and this is not considered to be the height of his career although he was a prominent artist in religious works we're gonna skip to the mythology section but before I get ahead of myself as a quick background 13 years before Raphael was even a twinkle in his daddy's eye Botticelli had his own studio and if you're keeping track that is the year 1470 that Botticelli opens his own art studio and that is when he really started working on creating his own name with his religious works. These mythology paintings that he moves on to later like the birth of Venus were considered to be the height of his career and a lot of people would consider them to be the height of his creativity as an artist as well. It was, he took a lot of risks and a lot of them paid off. However, later in his life, he started to develop this really expressive sense of painting. And it was so stylized for the time period, the world just wasn't ready for it. I wish I could show you some of these, but they're not considered to be very good, so I can't even find pictures of them on the internet <laughs> that I'm convinced are Botticelli. But this expressive style led him into a lot of social, financial, and um, mental decline later in his career because he is the first Renaissance artist that we really see fall out of grace. So all these other artists died with a really great reputation, but Botticelli is the first one who kind of goes so far against the grain that he loses all his money, he's not very well liked, and he ended up dying very poor and um, mentally unstable. But as I said, we're not really going to look at that today. We are going to be talking more about the midsection of his career which has his mythology paintings. And this is where we meet the woman, the myth, the legend, Venus. The Birth of Venus is a tempera painting on canvas. And this is a different medium than we have seen a lot of lately. We've seen either frescoes or oils up to this point, and the oils have been on wood. So automatically we know that this painting was going to be meant for a different purpose than the ones we've seen so far. Canvas and tempera paint were much cheaper mediums to work on. It's not going to be formally displayed in your office. It's going to be in your home. And we don't know exactly who this was for, but we believe it was commissioned by someone in the Medici family. And it was created between the years 1485 and 1486. So to give you a reference, Raphael would have been two or three years old at the time. So as I mentioned before, this is a very new style compared to things that we've looked at in the past. But it was kind of the beginning of this movement in our history that depicted Greek and Roman gods and goddesses in a more mythological setting. And it Later, we'll see it becomes kind of this obsession of the culture, whereas before it was all religious paintings all the time. Soon, it's going to become all Greeks, all Romans. But this mythological state kind of gives the viewer a more dreamlike experience as opposed to this more historical setting that was based in the religious text. In fact, depicting a woman in full nudity who was not Eve 
was very opposite of religious works during the Renaissance period. Um, Eve is pretty much the only woman that we see depicted in the f her full nudity. As you can tell, Venus is the first, <laughs> the first not Eve because she's entirely nude. But I've seen some reference this painting as um, being considered pagan because of this. So he he was definitely taking a risk on his viewership at the time. However, as I've mentioned before, this was also these risks paid off because this was considered to be the height of Botticelli's career and the height of his creativity. And we see religious paintings develop from here as we move on into the Baroque era. But there's a whole kind of fractured section of art that goes into these Greek and Roman paintings. And later on, it becomes an even bigger conversation socially and politically. So he really kicked off one of the biggest movements in our history with Sweet Venus. And we can tell that this is a classic Renaissance painting with the way she's displayed, with the shape of her body. We know that this was considered attractive. It is very Renaissance in style, but it's also got more of the super decorative, busy surround where there's a lot going on. She's coming out of a shell. Somebody's trying to throw a robe over her. Two angels are like, Rah! she's naked. And so in that sense, stylistically, it was ahead of its time. Otherwise, as I've said, we don't know a lot about this painting. We don't know exactly who it was commissioned for. We don't know its original hanging place. Now it is in the Uffizi Gallery. But it being an informal piece, any of the records that would have existed at the time of its creation were probably not considered important enough to keep. And um, maybe today they're not considered important enough to put on the internet because I couldn't find them. <laughs> But a lot of Renaissance artists, we see their sketches and their planning processes for these big murals, and we don't see that in The Birth of Venus. And it wasn't considered super important in the world of art history until well after it was completed. Today's video, hopefully short, sweet, and to the point. Next time, we are going to be talking about the Baroque era. And for a long time, this was my favorite era of art history. So I'm very excited to move into some of these artists. We're going to talk about Caravaggio. We're going to talk about Rembrandt. I haven't decided who else we're going to talk about, but I'm confident that we're going to talk about those two. So if you liked this video, if you found it educational, informational, subscribe to the channel, give it a thumbs up, click the bell, Thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.